get anybody or very few companies actually running tests, PR, marketing, publicity campaigns to figure out whether the four pieces of you know, the, the, the program are right. Do they know who the right audience is? Do they have relationships with them? Do they actually communicate the value in the words of the, per the people they're trying to talk to? Because it's great if I sell you a car, I can tell you why I think a car is great. I might be looking at you know, a car because it's got four, uh, four doors. You might be looking at you know, the, the um, horsepower. You might be looking at top speed. You might be looking for particular marks. So it doesn't matter how great I think the car is, unless it's talking about the things that matter to you, I'm you know, flogging a dead horse. If I understand what you're looking at, it might not be what you're exactly looking for, but I can say, but I know that this is a problem that you have, and this is the best thing for solving that problem. It may not have some of the other things that you want, but it's actually solving that problem that is the primary thing that's causing you the most pain. And there's a chance that you know, then you'll be interested. Or I can exclude you by saying, because I know that it doesn't have this, it's not something I can sell to you. But I'm working on a lean canvas right now for PR and marketing. So you can start with um, hypothesis in the same way as you do when startups build businesses, uh, where you can actually trial mini campaigns. This is what we encourage uh, customers that we work with to do, is not to get to the point where you have a product and then you just do one big fanfare via the media. What you do is you trial it, and you trial it with audiences. Sorry. No, oh. um, but you actually learn from the trial campaign so you can make things better. Because otherwise, you've got one shot at doing it if you get a product and you take it out to market, as Black we found out. You know, they, they developed the product, took it out, and hoped people would buy into it. Of course, they hadn't done the background stuff, so a lot of the stuff was wrong. And it didn't work. But if you start with a canvas that enables you to trial on small scales, the other thing is to turn it on its head. Rather than doing the Where's Waldo approach, where you go out and you try and use the media to find your audience, if you've done the background research and you've got all of these things right, you know who the audience is and you've built relationships with them, you know what their pain points are and you know what the value is that the product has to them, you know that the timing is right for them. Because often what happens is just what you explained was that you get given a product and said, OK, now we're going to launch it, rather than thinking, when's the best time for my audience to launch the product? It's like selling Christmas cards in February. You might sell them, but you'll sell them for a fraction of the price. And you know, getting people to buy them is going to be a lot harder than if you, you know, sell them in December. But you can figure out when the right time is. And you can test it and find that out you know, by doing um, dummy campaigns. And the other thing is that you can measure each of those different things. You can figure out whether they've worked or not. Was it the right audience, but the message was slightly wrong? Was it the right message, but the time was slightly wrong? And the fourth bit was the right delivery mechanism. Are we using social media when actually we should be going out and meeting customers face to face or prospects? We should be taking the product out to groups of people that are the sort of people that we want to sell to and actually getting their feedback on it before we make a decision that we've got the product absolutely right. And it's all part of the, the lean um, process um, because you can validate it or you can not validate it. So you can make informed decisions on it um, as you go along, rather than doing the traditional way, which is trying to get journalists interested. You've then got to get journalists to publish it. You're hoping that the people that read the, paper, the, the magazines or the websites that you're getting in are actually interested enough. And you know, then the 5% kicks in. Because you've then 300,000, you've still got to get through those first two stages first. Sorry, sir. I think it's understanding who the, the primary audience is. And it goes back to something we said earlier on about there will be lots of people that could potentially buy a product. But are you developing to capture as wide an audience as possible? Or are you developing for a particular person in mind, a particular organization, or for it to solve a particular problem? So I think that and, and what often happens is you'll get products developed where you develop a product that has multiple um, opportunities. But then how you market it is different. So if you're marketing a piece of software to 
healthcare, you've got to think about HIPAA. Um, you might be thinking about you know, how it would be used in a clinical environment. Whereas if you're talking to a defense contractor, you've got a whole load of other things that you need to sort out in terms of regulatory stuff. You need to you know, have relationships with other organizations you know, because you have to integrate you know, the piece of software with other things that, that your potential customers have. But again, it's, you can develop a broader product, but the marketing is laser focused on that audience. Who is the most likely person to, to actually buy that product, to give you money for something that you've developed? Um, and that just helps you to, to make sure that you're not going in. And I'll give you an example. I worked with a company that I went to the sales kickoff meeting and all of the sales guys were doing their pitches. And one of the big problems was that they were getting lots of leads, but they weren't converting and they weren't converting referrals from one customer to another. And when you heard the, the sales pitches, you realized why. Because the general sales pitches were different. And had I not have known otherwise, I would have thought they were talking about different products. Because one guy was talking about it from one perspective, one guy was talking about it from another industry perspective. And what was happening was that somebody in healthcare was recommending it you know, to somebody else on the other coast of the States. You know, the other guy was going in and selling it, he was coming in from a different perspective. Of course, he was selling the same product, but then you were getting this guy scratching his head going, but my friend told me that it did this. Oh, well, no, well the primary focus is here. Of course, what they hadn't done was make sure that when they were selling into certain segments, they were selling on the same things. So you were essentially getting somebody selling a defense product to a medical company. And so you, you, know, you can actually make sure that the way you describe the value of a product, the way that you position it, the pain point that you're solving is, is specific, even if the product is more general. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Right. So I would go back and look at each of those different areas. Build the relationships first, because without the PR piece, without having the relationships, marketing is less likely to work, the publicity is less likely to work, and you're not going to have the key information that you need in order to answer all of those questions. So when you get an opportunity to talk to somebody, you actually say the right thing to the right person at the right time, and you do it using the right delivery mechanism, whether that's face-to-face, -face, whether it's social media, whether it's a website, you know, whether it's referrals and recommendations. And build your customer base that way, rather than going out trying to hit a million people, hoping that you hit four and a half people. Because it's a very inefficient way of doing it, you'll spend huge amounts of money and effort, and the only outcome you'll know is that did we capture some people's attention? And even the people's attention we capture may not be exactly the right people. They might just be people that think it's kind of interesting. And I've had people that have been in Mashable or TechCrunch, they've had 300,000 page impressions after a piece hit. So what was the commercial value? Well, nothing. We didn't get anything from it, we don't know why. Because people were just driving by. It was interesting, it was cool, but you know, most of those 300,000 were never going to buy. They were just interested in you know, something that was in a website that you know, they got some spare time, so they thought they'd click it for, for, for 10 seconds. Um, and that doesn't tell you anything about you know, how to launch a product. It doesn't tell you whether you need to go back and revisit the product, um, you know, whether you need to make iterations after you've actually launched a product and how you improve a product going down the line. If you've got the relationships with people, you can test all of those things. It makes it far easier to do it. So that's really um, you know, the end of the detail. I was just going to tell you a little bit about me um, and how my company works. It's called Think Differently. And we work very differently to most PR companies. We work on an hourly basis. So if we can solve your problem in an hour, you pay for an hour. We don't say that you know, you've got to spend three months pitching journalists to get coverage, then to find out whether you can actually get people interested or whether you can answer a specific question. And our focus is on helping entrepreneurs build relationships because that's what's the most important thing. Without those relationships, nothing else works. Or you know, you're taking a chance on you know, whether you actually have the information to, to be able to sell all the product that you have. I use this as an example because um, the, my love of coffee, uh, the business model is driven around the way you buy coffee. We don't think that you should buy PR the way you buy it. You should be able to do what you do when you go to Starbucks and say, today I want an espresso. Today I want a latte. I want a grande, a venti, a short, a small. It's tailored to getting the advice that you need to your business to help you to move it forward. 
and to, you know, to, to help you to launch products or to sell products or get the information that you need in order to develop products. Um, and you should have the choice. We also publish our prices so everyone knows how much it costs. There's no phoning us up, you know, say, well, what's your budget? Imagine doing that if you go and buy a car. You see a car, you're like, you know, well, what's your budget? Well, I've got $30,000. You end up paying $30,000 for a $10,000 car. So we publish our prices so that everyone knows how much it costs. And one of my big visions is I want to help change my industry by enabling people like yourselves, entrepreneurs, product managers, uh, product development teams, to understand what public relations, marketing, publicity is, and what the difference is. So every day, Monday to Friday, I record a video um, that's between 30 and 90 seconds long. I'm trying to keep them between 30 and 60 on one aspect of public relations, marketing, or publicity that gives free advice. Um, it's just things that happen in the industry, things that's best practice, things that I see that I don't like, and things that I see that are wrong and I want to correct uh, you know, what's been said about public relations, marketing, or publicity, in order to give you information. And there's no attempt to sell off the back of it. My bigger goal of starting the company that I did 18 months ago, I want to change my industry. It doesn't help most companies these days, certainly not small companies. The model is wrong. The pricing structure is immoral. And ultimately, um, at the end of a three-month program, which is the minimum program for most PR agencies, what happens is, going back to the mutually beneficial relationship, PR company has three, three uh, months worth of retainer, you may have nothing. You may have a few pieces of press coverage which they can't tell you why they didn't work. And you also don't have relationships even with the journalists. So I want to change that, so by giving people information to at least ask the right questions when they go and talk to PR people. Um, you know, if there are things that you would like to be recorded, if there are questions that you want addressing, please let me know. I'm very happy to, uh, to do that for you. And there's all of my uh, contact detail. Um, please feel free to call me. I give out my cell phone number and people say, why do you give it out? People will phone you. That's kind of the idea. Um, if you have a question, please, you know, if it's convenient, phone me. If the phone is on and I can take the call, I will answer it. Um, and you know, for quick questions and stuff, I'm always happy just to answer them. Um, it's, there's not a, not a case of you know, phoning me and being charged for it. Um, if you have a quick question that I can answer, I will help you. I know it's been a very brief overview, but if you have questions you know, about any of the specifics, let me know. If you want more details, I'd be happy to answer specific questions today or um, after the session. Um, and again, there's things on the, the PR Espresso that if you have things that I cover that I don't go into enough detail. 30 seconds is not a very long time to cover very much in a video but at least gets things started. I'm happy to record more detailed ones if there are specific questions. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please, uh, please let me know.